In this video, I'm gonna take you on a step-by-step -step walkthrough of every single feature that we have to offer you inside of Synflow in around 15 minutes. Let's do it. Okay, once you're logged in, you're gonna have this screen in front of you. This is where all of your assistants live. To create a new assistant, all you need to do is go ahead and click the top right hand corner and press assistant and you have three options. You have start from scratch, the quick assistant setup or browse from template. If you want to start from scratch, it'll give you three options from here, outbound, inbound or widget. Outbound is making calls out to your contacts. Inbound, inbound is obviously receiving calls and the widget is embeddable assistant on your website or app or wherever it may be. For this example, let's go ahead and create an outbound. Once you've selected that, you are through to this screen. This is your configuration screen. This is how you can change your image, customize your language, select your voice. You can hook this up with 11 labs so you get multiple options there, but this is some preset voices for you. This will be your custom voices and you can also clone your voice in here too with five clean sample recordings of your voice up to 20 megabytes each this can be audio or video too next we have the name of our assistant which can be customizable here the ai model our synflow llm or gpt4 3.540 or 4 the patience level the patience level is for Low is for quick exchanges, high is for more focused turns with less crosstalk. Your custom greeting here, where you can add in variables like a customer name if you're connecting it to a database, and your custom vocabulary can be set here. To enable recordings on or off, here's your toggle, and some advanced settings in here too, which means you can optimize streaming latency, stability, style, similarity, speaker boost, idle duration and pauses. Bear in mind, tweaking some of these will affect the latency response time of your assistant. So try that out. Once you've built your assistant, you can test it here by selecting a phone number, entering a name and entering a phone number of the person to call. To test the voices, hit play. Once you've done it, click next. And this is gonna go through to your prompt. Once you're creating a new assistant, you will have a prompt already put in here for you so you can get a good idea of how to structure your prompt if it's your first time here. For example, each assistant should have background info, some objection handling instructions, and then some script instructions, like how do you want your assistant to perform? If you wanna go ahead and use a template, you can use a template here, select a template from the list, and press apply prompt and that prompt will be changed for you in here. If you wanted to ask Copilot to help write you a prompt, you can do that also, and enter the information of the assistant that you wanna create. There you go, you can just follow the instructions and then the AI Copilot will help construct that prompt for you. If you have a website or a company you wanted to add some knowledge to your new assistant, click add knowledge base, and you can select from the list if you need to create a new knowledge base, it's here on the second tab, which we'll go to in a minute. To set up some actions, we have some pre-built actions that you can connect with your assistant here. Send SMS, for instance, this allows your assistant to send a text message to the contact on the call. And this can be configured with content and under what condition it can be taken place. Real-time bookings. Connect cow.com or go high level with your API key in Cal event. That means you can check the calendar and make bookings live on the call. We have call transfers. If you want your assistant to pass the call to a human under certain conditions, you can do that here. For instance, when should the transfer take place if somebody wants to talk to a manager? We have the advanced settings in here. The extension, which you, the assistant would need to call if it's part of a transfer tree. The timeout of which the assistant will pull the call back if it doesn't get through. And then what the assistant should say while performing the action. Trying to reach the target. Let me transfer you to a human. Please hold on. The target answered message. I'm transferring you now. Goodbye. And if the target didn't answer the message, sorry, I couldn't transfer you. And you can customize that however you need. Next, the information extractor. 
This is handy if you want to pull key information out of your assistant call and pass it into a database or an email or a spreadsheet, whatever it is. You can customize your extractor to find out the user's name, email, company, address, etc., etc. So when you add one of these, we have the identifier set and what the AI should extract from the call. Add these together, structure your prompt, and then your AI can go off and retrieve that info. Custom actions. A custom action is anything that you can create, which maybe calls an API, calls a database and pulls info into the call or posts information out of the call into a database. This is a more advanced tutorial that's covered in another video, but you can customize your action to do anything and we'll show you the custom action tab in a sec. Next, when you want to deploy your assistant, all you have to do is attach a phone number, check the box, and you're good to go. Your assistant can be customized again in the configure tab. The prompt can be customized here. The deployment, you can deploy your assistant to go high level directly into Zapier, enter your webhook in here, or build a, a workflow straight within Synflow. Use the REST API, here's your API key, or even do batch calling. Add some contacts, add a time zone, the date, and starting hours and ending hours. This means you can set your assistant to call a list of contacts within working hours according to your time zone. And finally, the, the calls tab. This has a list of calls, live or test, filtered by created date and status, so you can view all of the calls your assistant's made over that time. That's the assistant tab. Next, let's go on to knowledge base. If you wanted to create a knowledge base for your assistants to use, Super simple, knowledge base, new folder, the trigger conditions for the RAG search. This means if the user is asking about information about the company or how many properties you have, this is how it gets triggered. Let's just put test for now. And to add context or content into this, you can add either a file, text, or a URL. With the URL, we'll go ahead and scrape the website for that info. For a file, you can import a PDF, max 10 megabytes. And for text, you can just copy and paste your content in here. This will give your assistant the knowledge it needs to give the user the information that it's asking for. Next, custom actions. With custom actions, you can trigger API calls during your phone call. To create one, you go start from scratch or browse our templates. To start from scratch, click this one. Give it a name, a description of what you want the API to do. The speech is what your assistant will say while it's making the API call. You have a toggle, which means you can run this action before the call starts. For instance, if you wanted to fetch some user information from a database before the call even starts, trigger this on. And then when the user answers, you have that information readily available. To get information from the user, add the input. Give it a name. This could be if you want to get the city, for example. The type, is it a string, float, list, phone number, email, etc. And then an accurate description. This tells the LLM how to use this tool and the more descriptive the better. And then if you can provide an example of exactly the response the user might give, that's handy. So it's a name, it'll be a string, describe the user's name, and then Tom, for instance. Then connect to the API. Depending on which API you're going to use, this is going to differ. Select the method, give it the endpoint, add in any headers, any query parameters that it's going to need, and the value, and then any authentication that it requires in here. Next, you can initialize the action by pressing this button. And then once initialized, you have all the endpoints available to you in this box. So you can write a prompt using the outputs of that API to be used in that conversation. Next, we have workflows. You can think of workflows as like an inbuilt Zapier directly within Synthflow. So let's do one to make a call. So 
simple, we have a trigger and an action. For the trigger, you could use a core element like a flow or a form where the user can complete a form and trigger a phone call. You can trigger a phone call on a schedule or through a webhook. Once the trigger's made, it's made a phone call, hook up your assistant and then you're good to go. If you wanted to add multiple steps, you can. We have some custom modules in here for you. The app actions, you can select your favorite applications to do lookups, update the database, etc. Next, we have contacts. Contacts are handy if you want to imb if you want to use contacts are handy if you want to use Synthflow as your CRM. Maybe you have a list of contacts that you want to call, but you don't want to set up the integration to go back and forward. You can just import your contacts directly in Synthflow. Click import from CSV or go high level from CSV. You have 100 contacts, a max of 10 megabytes. To download an example CSV, you click this button, auto upload from your computer. Here you are. If you wanted to create a contact manually, you can do that also by giving it a first name, last name, phone number, tag, and an email address. Integrations. So far, we have the integrations of Twilio, Eleven Labs, Zapier, Go High Level, Stripe, HubSpot, Make, Bubble, with NAN and Replit coming soon. This means you can connect your own phone number, your own custom voices, your own workflows, your own Go High Level account, your own Stripe account for billing, your own HubSpot account, so you can manage your customers from directly from HubSpot, Make for powerful workflows, and then Bubble for full stack application development, no code style. Also, we have our REST API keys, which you can create straight from inside of Synthflow. Next, we go into settings. This means this is your workspace ID, your name, and your optional website. You can choose who is invited onto your account, the plan that you're on, your login credentials and notifications. And then finally, your agency side of the business. Now, if you're an agency looking to build voice AI applications for other people and you want to resell them on, or maybe you're managing them exclusively for them, the agency plan is going to be for you. So once you have an agency plan, here's what you're going to see. You have your general, so you can add your own logo, customize the name. You can create sub accounts for your clients to create a new one. It's very simple. You can import from go high level or you can add a new sub account and inside a sub account, you can manage everything about it. So you can see your dashboard calls, made actions, executed talk time, give it a workspace name or a go high level location ID. You can add your clients and this means they're not going to see your whole account. They're just going to see the sub account that you assign to them. The tab visibility, you can allow your client full access to everything or you can customize it to allow them to configure to configure the prompts to deploy them however you want so you can give them full control or you can limit or you can give them limits as to what they can do with regards to permissions you can give them an amount of three minutes per month maybe you want to say a hundred you can allow them to create or not maybe you just want them to create inbound and outbound Maybe you, the limit is three for the number of assistants they can have. You can allow them to create teams, workflows, custom actions, buy their own phone numbers, and even use contact management. Or you can toggle this all off and you can fully manage that yourself. Within the products, within the products, you can assign them assistants, you can assign them assistant teams, workflows, phone numbers, custom actions, and contacts depending on the amount of control that you want to give them. For pricing, you can assign a pricing plan to this client by adding one to a sub account. Let's say we want to give them a basic one. Let's assign this. This means that they can see this pricing plan on their account. I'll show you in a second and they can start paying you. Next payments. Here's a list of all the payments, uncaptured, captured and errored out. They get their own API key, which means you can bring in Twilio and 11 labs so they don't have to use yours and a list of calls according to that client. Now, once you go through to this sub account, you can see exactly what your client is going to be able to see. You can see the assistance that they've been assigned, the customization options, the phone numbers, the workflows, and the knowledge base. 
With regards to pricing, you can create your own custom pricing plans really simply by pressing create pricing plan and going through the amount of minutes, the, the number of assistants that they can have. Let's do one now. The price per minute for usage based pricing or not. If you just want to do a fixed price, you can. Or you can say, I want to do a price per minute of 30 cents. We're on an agency plan within our limits, so we don't have any cost there. And then above the three minutes, they get charged. For payments, you can see a full list of payments that have come in through your agency. Connect your custom domain. So you can put it on a subdomain, add meta tags, add your meta meta image and your SEO description, add your own custom support documentation. For visibility, you can choose a default for all clients that should be able to see everything, or you can customize this on the client level by sub account that we showed previously. For integrations, these are again your default integrations that each new client can see. And then for permissions, these are your default permissions that each new sub account is going to get. And that's the complete rundown of the agency plan. I hope you enjoyed this full breakdown of Synthflow and I will catch you on the next one.